Hello, are you prepping for the Praxis General Science exam? My name is Derek Masiaga. I'm a science educator with study.com. And in this video, I'm gonna walk you through some example earth science problems. Let's take a look. Question one, which of the following is an intrusive igneous rock? A, limestone, B, schist, C, gneiss, or D, granite? All right, so the question is asking us about an intrusive igneous rock. And so just a tip about earth science, there are three major types of rocks. There's um, igneous, there is metamorphic, and there is sedimentary. And so just quickly, when, when I think of the word igneous, I think of the word ignite. And so um, igneous is basically formed from lava. The lava cools down and forms a rock. We have metamorphic. Metamorphic to me, um, I kind of think of the word transform. And so these are rocks that have like over time have undergone extreme heat and, and pressure. So we have... Um, basically heat and pressure here over time. And then we have sedimentary. And to me, this kind of, uh, I think of the word surface, okay? And so we have basically um, the surface particles such as rocks, organic materials, they get compressed over time. So these are kind of like surface rocks, okay? And so that kind of requires us to kind of know our, our rocks here. So it actually turns out that for A, limestone, that's a sedimentary rock. Uh, B and C, schist and gneiss, are both metamorphic. And so D, granite, is the only igneous rock um, from this list. So D, granite, is the correct answer. Question two. Students were observing different properties of rocks in their science classroom. One student noticed a fossil embedded in the rock he was studying. What type of rock was this student analyzing? A, a granite rock, B, a sedimentary rock, C, an igneous rock, or D, a metamorphic rock? So once again, you can kind of see the importance of understanding your three rock types. And we had just talked about the three major forms, sedimentary, igneous, and, and metamorphic. And so the, the correct answer here is going to be B, the sedimentary rock. Um, because when something, if an organism were to die, it would die in the surface, the, uh, the surface of the earth, okay? And over time, it would get embedded in that surface. And so the sedimentary rock is the correct answer here for where we're going to be able to find fossils. Question three, a paleontologist at the University of Idaho has taken a group of high school students out on a dig. The class goes to an area that contains a large cliff that is broken up into various layers. The paleontologist, Dr. Luann Noel, explains that she can use these layers to mark the long history of planet Earth. She explains to the students that geologic time is broken into eons, eras, and periods. Eons are the largest time span, she further explains that periods can be further broken down into smaller segments of time. What did Dr. Noel call these smaller segments? A, epochs, B, sedimentary chunks, C, light years, or D, histories? And the correct answer here is A, epochs. Epochs, the literal definition is just uh, a smaller time frame from a other time frame. So, um, when we break down a period into smaller times, sm segments of times, we call those epochs. Uh, option B, sedimentary chunks, that would just be referring to a chunk of sedimentary rock. Uh, C, light years, that is uh, a time span more for astronomy and how far one, how far the distance of a beam of light would travel in one year. And then D, histories, I think they're just throwing you off there. I don't even believe that is a, um, a measurement of time. Question four. The process of water vapor turning into a liquid is known as A, evaporation, B, condensation, C, sublimation, or D, transpiration. And so we want to know, we want to go from water vapor into a liquid. So water vapor is a gas. 
and we're going from a gas to a liquid. And so the correct answer here is B, condensation. This is literally how we get rain. Uh, the water vapor in the atmosphere gets collected up into the clouds. And then when it cools down enough, it turns back into a liquid and rains down. Uh, evaporation would be the opposite process. We would be going from a liquid to a gas. C, sublimation is when we go directly from a solid to a gas. And then D, transpiration. I believe that is a uh, process of plants uh, as they kind of take in CO2 and release oxygen. I hope this video was helpful. If you're looking for more ways to study, check out our other videos and then also make your way over to study.com to check out our Praxis test prep courses. As a study.com member, you'll get full access to hundreds of practice problems like the ones I just walked you through, plus targeted instruction for any topics that you're still struggling with, as well as test strategy to help you maximize your score on test day. Finally, we wanna hear from you. Please like and subscribe if today's video was helpful and let us know down below in the comments if there are any specific topics you want us to cover next. Good luck and happy studying.